There we go. Okay, George Schneiderver is credited with, with retrieving the lone woman from San Nicolas Island and returning with her to Santa Barbara in late summer 1853. Born in Tennessee in 1802, Schneiderver was a mountain man, hunter, and rancher who lived in California from 1833 to 1883. Nidever's account of his encounter with a lone woman and the time she spent on the mainland before she died is recorded in an autobiography dictated to Edward F. Murray in 1878 and later edited and published by William H. Ellison in 1937 as the Life and Adventures of George Nidever, the life story of a remarkable California pioneer told in his own words and none wasted. Nidever was not the only one along on the trip to San Nicolas Island who was looking for the lone woman. Carl Dittman, also known as Charlie Brown, was part of Nidever's otter hunting group that summer, and he was actually the first person to see and interact with the lone woman, then signal to Nidever and the others to join him. Dittman's recollections were also recorded by Murray, but it was the Nidever family who took the lone woman in after she arrived in Santa Barbara about September 1st, and it was Nidever's wife, Maria Sinforosa Romana Sanchez Nidever, who was in charge of looking after the lone woman while she lived with the family for seven weeks before she died. Once she arrived in Santa Barbara, the lone woman attracted immediate attention. As Knight ever put it, quote, the news was not long in spreading of the arrival of the old woman, and we barely reached my house with her when half the town came down to see her. And Carl Dittman added, quote, from the beach, we took her to Nidever's house, where she remained until her death, which took place about seven weeks from the time she landed." End quote. One of the questions we made efforts to uh, answer for the Lone Woman website feature to be hosted by Channel Islands National Park was where in Santa Barbara did the family of George and Sinforosa Nidever live in 1853 when the Lone Woman came to stay with them? Second, does any physical evidence of the former Knight of Adobe exist today? And finally, are there any historic maps, illustrations, or photographs that could give us an idea of the appearance of the Knight of Adobe where the lone woman spent the last seven weeks of her life? The location of the Knight of Adobe where the lone woman lived in 1853 was common knowledge through the early 20th century. As Emma Hardacre stated in 18 Years Alone, A Tale of the Pacific, published in 1880, Quote, Captain Nidever's house, where the stranger died, stands in sight of the ocean and can be pointed out by any schoolboy in town, end quote. But that information faded as time passed, although a Santa Barbara informant, Luis Antonio Maria Ortega, told J.P. Harrington that, quote, the woman was taken to the house of Jacob Nidever's folks in Santa Barbara, an adobe situated near where the Southern Pacific Freight Station now stands, end quote. An assumption was made that the freight station Ortega referred to was near property owned by Nidever on Burton Mound. However, according to property deeds in the Santa Barbara County Hall of Records, Nidever sold the Burton Mound property to Augustus Hinchman on November 1, 1851, and purchased four city blocks on the east side of town, about a mile from the salt pond, now known as the Andre Clark Bird Refuge, on September 1, 1852. Nidever owned those four blocks until April 7, 1880, when a deed showed sale of the property to F.E. Kellogg. Also during this time period, Nidever bought the lease to San Miguel Island from Samuel Bruce and maintained a ranch on the island from 1851 until 1870, when the severe drought of the mid-1860s forced Nidever to sell his interest to the Mills Brothers. In June of 1881, Kellogg sold, sold the former Nidever blocks to Martha S. Barker, the stepmother of James L. Barker, for whom Barker Pass Road in Santa Barbara is named. Barker, born in Massachusetts in 1846, became a Santa Barbara County surveyor as well as a deputy county assessor. He acquired the former Nidever blocks through his stepmother, and the two of them lived in what has been called a fine old adobe at Quinientos and Quarantina Streets. According to city directory listings from 1886 through, 18, through 1906, which did not specify a house number, the Barker residence was described as on the north side of Quiniento Street between Nopal and Quarantina. It is possible that the Barkers lived at the former Nidever Adobe for about 26 years from the time that Martha Barker acquired the Nidever blocks in 1881 through 1907 when she died. 
The Southern Pacific Railway Company obtained two former Knight River lots, blocks 316 and 333, and built Santa Barbara's first passenger and freight station in 1887, the Mason Street Station. The Mason Street Station became a freight station only in 1901 and was replaced in 1906 after nearly 20 years service by the freight station on the east side of Santa Barbara Street. Although the Mason Street Station was no longer functioning when Luis Antonio Mar Maria Ortega gave his information to Harrington around 1912 to 1915, the lots where the freight station stood were just west of the two remaining lots owned by Nightover when the lone woman lived with the family from September to October of 1853. Those lots are bounded by Mason Street on the north, Nopal Street on the east, Carpinteria Street on the south, and Quarantina Street on the west, now bisected by the 101 freeway. Finally, confirmation of the location of the Nidaver adobe on the remaining two city blocks formerly owned by no George Nidaver comes from a woman whose family rented the adobe from James Barker in 1911 and 1912. Louise McIntyre, born in 1894 in California, moved with her mother, two younger brothers, and stepfather from San Luis Obispo to Santa Barbara in 1911. Her mother, Lily Thompson, was friends with James Barker, and he offered to rent the adobe at the corner of Quinientos and Quarantina Streets to the Thompson family. According to family oral history and notes, Barker told the new tenants that the adobe was where the lone woman lived with the night of her family when she came to Santa Barbara in 1853, and he showed them the room where the lone woman died. In 1973, Santa Barbara News Press article written by local historian Walker Tompkins uh, gives details from his neighbor, Mrs. Louise Arrow, the former Louise McIntyre, about living uh, with her family in the former night of her adobe in 1911. And uh, she added that Barker showed the family a ship's cabin door that Nidever had removed from the schooner he used to retrieve the lone woman and installed that door in his kitchen. To illustrate his newspaper article, Tompkins included a photograph that had white outlines of what he referred to as the ghost adobe as a way of indicating where the Nidever adobe was situated at the intersection of Quinientos and Quarantina. Unfortunately, Tompkins had incomplete information and his ghost adobe was shown on the wrong side of the street. The Southern Pacific Railway's Mason Street Station was on the west side of Quarantina, both north and south of Quinientos Street. The Night of Adobe was on the east side of that intersection on the north side of Quinientos, now nearly covered up by the 101 freeway. This location was also noted by Louise Arrow, who, when taken by her grandson to see the former Night of Adobe, explained that the site was no longer visible because the adobe had been taken down to make way for the freeway construction. Louise Arrow's information is backed up by numerous public records. 1912 property ownership map for Santa Barbara City Block 315 shows that James L. Barker owned the lots at the corner of Quinientos and Quarantina Streets. And the 1912 Santa Barbara City Directory listing shows Louise McIntyre as living at the corner of Quinientos and Quarantina Streets. And also city directories from 1886 through 1906 list James Barker and Martha Barker living at the corner of Quinientos and Quarantina Quarantina Streets, and two of those listings specify that the property is on the north side of Quiniento Street between Nopal and Quarantina. Uh, and in addition, maps from the 1870s surveys show adobe structures on the north side of Quinientos and Quarantina. One small irony regarding Louise McIntyre's association with the former Knight of her adobe is that when she married Martin Arrow in 1915, she became related by marriage to the family of George Knight of her, through a distant cousin. That cousin, Maria Dolores Bermudez, born 1848, married George and Sinforosa Nidever's son, Jose George Emilio Nidever, born 1847. Little did 17-year-old Louise McIntyre know when she lived in the Nidever adobe in 1911 that she would one day be connected by her marriage to the family of George Nidever, who returned to Santa Barbara with the lone woman of San Nicolas Island in 1853. So based on the newly acquired information, we feel that it is likely that the Night of Adobe is represented by the larger of the black rectangular blocks on the Santa Barbara Topographic Survey map created in 1870 by the USGS, shown as a small section here. 
This map is on display at the Gled Hill Library at the Santa Barbara Historical Museum. When compared to similar scale maps with numbered city blocks, the adobe uh, appears that appears in the 1870 topo map is situated on the southwest corner of city block 315, one of the four blocks purchased by George Nidever in 1852. This then is the likely location of the last home of the lone woman of San Nicolas Island and the place where she was baptized and died on October 19, 1853. Nothing of the old re adobe remains today since that quadrant of city block 315 is now under the 101 freeway, although a corner is visible but cordoned off by chain link fence. There is a possibility that the foundation of the adobe may be intact and near enough to the street that it could be identified through a surface survey or the use of ground penetrating radar. There we go. A request for approved access to the remnant lot for the proposed survey has been submitted to Caltrans District 5, and Caltrans historians are currently searching for archival material for us, including field notes, maps, and photographs on the freeway uh, construction project at that intersection. And in the meantime, for those who would like to see an existing, although incomplete, night of adobe that is accessible to the public, the adobe that was likely constructed by a mission-trained Indian crew and used by the night of family for ranching operations from 1851 to 1870 can be seen on San Miguel Island. Located in a ravine south of Kyler Harbor, portions of some of the adobe brick walls that were part of the 23 by 26 foot structure are still visible, according to the two 2010 survey report by uh, Costello and Thorpe for Channel Islands National Park. Much of what Costello and Thorpe learned about the San Miguel Island adobe layout and construction could help us uh, identify what remains of the former night of our adobe at Quinientos and Quarantina Streets. And finally, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the support we've received for this project from the National Park Service, Channel Islands National Park, Western Parks Association, and the U.S. Navy. And I'd also like to recognize my partner, uh, Alex Gervatsky, who was extremely helpful with this project, and certainly want to appreciate the information given to us by Terry Chaffee and Helen Park Shapiro, who are Night of Her Family relatives, and the crucial new detail supplied to, uh, supplied to us by Eric Volbel, and family who are descendants of Louise Arrow, formerly Louise McIntyre. Thank you.